Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a look at how C Sharp 11 greatly improves on one of my favorite features which is attributes by just adding a small change. This was actually a C Sharp 10 feature that was cut and then moved to C Sharp 11 and we know it won't be cut this time around because it has been worked on since then. And just because of how prevalent attributes are in C Sharp and how annoying the workaround around the limitation was, I'm sure we're gonna see tons of people using this feature straight away. If you like the type of content and you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell. And for more training, check out nickjapsas.com. Now, just a small reminder, I will be in Oslo this year running a workshop called Introduction to Effective Testing in C Sharp and .NET. In this two-day in-person workshop, we're gonna take a look at unit testing, integration testing, mutation testing, and performance testing. And we're gonna set the right foundation for all of these different types of testing so you can succeed in your path. If you want to join me, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. Don't worry about the ticket price. Usually your employer will pay for that. So get them, speak with your manager, and I hope to see you in Oslo. All right, so let me just show you what the problem is first, because you kind of need context to know why it was annoying before and why it's better now. So I'm going to go ahead and create in this simple API that only has a single controller, the boilerplate uh, weather controller. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder, and I'm going to say over here, filters. And I'm going to create a new filter. Now, in case you don't know what a filter is in C Sharp, it is effectively an endpoint specific middleware. So you can do things before an endpoint and after an endpoint call. And they can also be applied on controllers if you want them to be applicable on everything in this controller. So I'm just going to say here, logging um, filter, and that's it. And what this will do is it will implement the iAsync filter action filter interface. And I'm going to implement that method. And I only have two parameters, the executing context and the next delegate, which is the next thing in the pipeline. So what this filter will do just as a demo is it will have a private read only I logger of the type of the filter here. And then I'm just going to log something before the request and after the request. So to act as a bit of a showcase in terms of what this can do. So in here I can turn this into an async task and I can say uh, logger.log information and I can say before endpoint stuff and then this will be after endpoint stuff and in between I'm going to have await next so I'm going to await the delegate and that's it and now I could turn this into an attribute in itself and decorate the attribute directly but if I do that, I cannot have constructor-based dependency injection. So what I can do instead to also have constructor-based dependency injection is just create it as it was and go here and say builder.services.add scoped. And it is scoped because it's being used in the controller, which is also scoped. So I'm going to say login filter. It could be also a transient or a singleton, depending on your requirements. But I wanted to have the same lifetime as my controller. So now that I have the filter, I can go in the controller itself and I can say, OK, what do I want to decorate? I want to decorate this get endpoint. So I'm going to say service filter over here. And then this accept, as you can see here, a type of a specific thing. And the type is the type of the filter. Now, in everywhere else in the language, if that was a thing, you would pass down a generic. You wouldn't pass down a type because working with a type directly is a bit of a pain. And you can also not have constraints in terms of what you want that type to be because you just need type. So if I just wanted types to implement a specific thing or look and feel as a specific type of class or a struct or whatever, I could not do that. So what I have to do is say type of logging filter. And if I do that, then I can go ahead and debug this API. And if I call that endpoint now through Postman, then as you can see, uh, if this is, yeah, here we go. Then as you can see, stuff happened before the endpoint and stuff happened after the endpoint. And if I had logging in here as well, you would be able to see the action. So my filter is working basically. That's what I'm trying to say. And just to prove this again, because I don't have any logging in the endpoint, I'm going to run it again, call that endpoint, as you can see. And I'm going to stick a breakpoint here just to see the flow of the request. I'm going to say uh, stick one here. So stuff before the endpoint, then I go into the next thing in the pipeline, which is my action. And then I return my stuff and then stuff after the endpoint. So the filter is working, but I hate so much that I have to do this with the type of. It just looks like the old one out because everyone else in the language, you could have a generic here, but you cannot do this. You cannot say 
just add a service filter of a specific generic type until C sharp 11. I'm going to cheat a bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the source code of this attribute. Well, I just grab that actually. And I'm just going to create my own version of it. So I'm going to say better service filter attribute. I'm just going to paste that here. Don't worry about it. I'm going to just quickly rename it. Let's just remove the stuff I don't want to have here just so it doesn't distract you. Uh, let's talk about what we have. So you go away, you go away, you go away. Metadata, let's add that. Here we go. And then I'm going to just rename this. So the biggest problem is you have to pass down the type and then configure the property to be used here to retrieve the service from the DI container, which is annoying. There's also no way to constrain the thing you're pulling down to a specific interface. For example, I filter metadata. The way this is done here is through hard casting, whatever. We don't care about that. What I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete this type and this property. So this will now not compile. And I'm going to go in C sharp in the CS proj and I'm going to enable preview features. I'm going to say lang version and I'm going to say preview. So now with that enabled, I can use the new feature, which is generics on attributes. So I can say the filter and then I can say here type of the filter and I abstract all that type stuff away. And all I want for the user to do, and let me just comment this out. I'm, in fact, I'm going to just roll it back so you can see how bad it looked before. And I'm going to say better service filter and I'm just going to pass down the generic. I'm going to say logging filter and that's it. And now I don't have to deal with any of the type of stuff. I can still have optional parameters. For example, if I want uh, the thing to be reusable or to have a customized order, I can just specify it if I want to, but I no longer have to deal with that constructor, the type of stuff. And that means that in my code, I can write better code because I can use to my benefit the fact that I can have constraints on the type here and do more interesting things in the method. And if I go ahead and I run this, actually, I'm just going to show you how it all still works. So I'm going to call that. You can see the endpoint is hit. I'm getting the filter and things happen before and after. I'm going to show you the console. This is still all working. So this small change will make working with filters so, so much more interesting. And it's the one place where you couldn't use generics before. So finally we have it. And I'm hoping to see way more interesting things done with them. What do you think about this feature? Do you think you're going to use this straight away like me? Let me know in the comments down below. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.